So what is true love in a relationship? I think this question can be answered in many ways. Um, I, think, I think it's interesting to look at what is relationship. Like what is this, this you and this me? Like who is this you and me? That's, that's an interesting question in itself. Like, who are you in relationship with? So maybe you're sitting there and you're single, but you've got someone you're in love with, or you're sitting there and you've been married for 40 years, or you're sitting there and you've just been together for like 10 years. Whatever relationship it is you have, who is the person that you actually see? So in our brains, we've got these imaginations, which are amazing. And the imagination can remember like 20 years of life. The imagination can't really remember before birth of this body, but it can remember events of what happened in this life and it strings it all together. And it um, puts things together, not as they were, but as you interpret them, which might be the only way in which they were your interpretation. There might not be any other interpretation, but just put that in there so you know that it's just your interpretation. Another person doesn't see that story that way, well, that way. So um, your imagination is that um, that somebody's a certain age and you met at a certain age and they've got certain behavior qualities. They're grumpy, they're happy, they're sad. You have images of what you've done together, where you've been, what it felt like to be together. You've got ideas of the future and what you'll do in the future. You've got mem memories of arguments, of good times, of times you have both been upset about something, of making love together, doing all these different things. And when you sit in front of your partner, you think, that's who I'm in relationship with, that image in time. Whereas that's never who you're in relationship with. That's a relationship with your thoughts. That's not actually them who's sitting in front of you. They're your thoughts, they're your memories. It doesn't, your memories don't even tell you directly what happened, that your image and your particular version of the event. Often if you share versions with three or four other friends, you realize that you all saw the same memory so completely differently and you see it in different ways. Like you remember different parts of it, remember different things that stand out to you. So, um, who is it then that sits in front of you? So you've got your image of who sits in front of you, but that is your image, that is your projection, that's not who they are. Isn't that really amazing? So all you've got is what's in front of you, right there. And even an idea, even an idea that, it's a, that, that you're in relationship with a woman in that moment, so you might interpret and think, it's a woman, she's got a red coat on, brown eyes, um, she's sitting on the floor. That is your interpretation that's going in time. That's not actually what's happening. That's an interpretation that's passing through. Yeah. That's not who they are either. So anything that you think about them isn't who they are. So who are you in relationship with? All your images and idea are part of your brain that's, that's changing and moving and updating continuously, that's not fixed. That's like an ocean calming and going, like um, a seafront coming and going, constantly changing, changing the world, changing how you feel things, your emotion changes and the world seems different, you're angry and then you're happy and the whole world seems different when you're happy as opposed to when you're angry. So maybe you have, okay, so that, I can't name them as something in time. I can't name them as anything. But what about if it's the feeling that I feel right now? But how do you perceive that thought, in, in, that feeling? And already to think, okay, I'm having love towards that person is already an interpretation of what's happening. It's already another thought that's coming and going. So it can't be that. So there might be great love, but how do you know it's love? 
and it's changing as well. So that also can't be it, the way that you feel with them now. So what is here, who, and what is here is who you're relating to. What is here at the fun, fundamental level, or the absolute level, is consciousness. There is a consciousness that's happening instantly. There is a recognition of the skin, the hair, the eyes, the eyebrows, the cheeks, the lips, the sounds. And that recognition doesn't move or go into time. But yet everything's moving in it. So if the person moves, but even that idea that they were just, that they'd moved is an idea that comes and goes. So that's not it. Consciousness isn't an idea, isn't a thought, isn't something that moves. It's perfectly still. So even if they move, you're already thinking about it. That's already a dualistic mind that's thinking about it. There's nothing wrong with the dualistic mind, but it's a thought that comes and goes. Consciousness, in a way, is perfectly still, that yet there seems to be all these things moving in it. But any idea you have about that is an idea that's coming and going. And we don't know if consciousness is looking from both angles or just one angle. We don't know what consciousness is or how it's happening, but yet there is consciousness and both parties can acknowledge that. There is consciousness of everything. And the trick about consciousness, the beauty about consciousness is consciousness isn't contained anywhere. So it's not looking out from your brain. It's not really looking out from your eyes. It seems that way. So look, consciousness seems to be looking through these bodies, but actually consciousness is in all things. It's actually the face, the eyes, the hair, the sounds that this is speaking, the hearing of it, it's instantaneously in all things. You could think of it like atoms, how there's not like more atoms here, there's atoms in everything equally. In order for there to be something to be appearing, there has to be atoms. And that's the same as consciousness. It's just like it's looking as if it comes from this angle because it has to look from a particular angle, otherwise it would be everywhere, which would be too chaotic. So it looks from a particular direct direction, just like at night when you dream, you look from a particular angle. You don't just look from the whole entire dream that's mind blowing. It, it kind of means that the dream would disappear if you look from every single angle simultaneously. In a way, consciousness is looking from every angle simultaneously. But it's looking through these bodies having a human experience. So it's like, like consciousness is using these bodies in order to peer at this world. So it's using the senses of these bodies in order to experience everything. Some teachers will teach there is no consciousness. That's not the ultimate, which in a way it's true. Consciousness isn't something that exists separate from everything. Like the ultimate teaching is there is nothing appearing as everything or everything, which is nothing. And consciousness is that bridge, but it's not even a bridge. It is, it's all one thing, it is. Like, so some people say consciousness is a bridge. Some people also say the body is a bridge, which I like, and I think it's beautiful to say these things. And I'm, I'm a spiritual tart with my words. I say everything from every different angle. I don't stick to one particular way and think that's the way. I do not think there is a way. How could there be a way if every word, every thought is something that's coming and going in that freedom? How could there be a way of teaching when the teaching is absolutely right here and everything you think, everything you say about it is moving and changing like a sea? You could look at knowledge like a sea, the ocean front coming in, and it's always changing because it gets other parts of the sea coming back and forward and back and forward and then bits more of information. Knowledge and everything in this world is also infinite. So it's constantly expanding. So you could not possibly come to a way of explaining this. As our knowledge, our minds, our information, our language grows, then we'll describe this in completely different ways. But there's something that's here, no matter how intelligent, how we describe it, how we communicate it, there's something here that's never moving that is all three things and is your nature. And that's consciousness. And that is true love in a relationship. Ba, ba, ba. It's the only love in the relationship. In the, in the image of who you're in relationship, that comes and goes. The image of who you are and who they are, and it's always changing. True love can only be here. 
So the love side, the way I teach that, the love side of consciousness, because consciousness can seem a bit cold, is the I am, and they, they melt together perfectly. So you've got this consciousness, this awake looking, and then this sense of being, which is the love side, that this is, you can see it as I am, like that's how I want to express it, I am, but it's actually that this is, this is happening, this is, like the sense of existence, not for anyone, not to anyone, it's just the sense of being. So that's true love. To me, um, we, you begin to hate your partner um, and like hatred begins to form in relationships when you base love on something that's moving. So when you base love on their personality, their looks, their way of being, um, their success, their money, their bank balance, when you base love on that, then obviously it's going to be chased by hate because their beauty, um, their knowledge, their information, their body, their money, everything's going to change. So if you are attached to a certain thing, in a way you're also rejecting them because you're not accept accepting the true nature of things, which is change. So if you're thinking love is dependent on the way they are, on their things, on their personality, then it's not true love because it's dependent on them staying the same, which is an impossibility, and you staying the same. And what you do when you do that is you actually begin to shrink each other. You begin to contain each other. So rather than this infinite possibility and this expansion to anything can be and allowing that partner to be anything it wants to be and any anything that's appearing right now, you begin to put more and more conditions on. You have to stay the same. You have to behave like this. You have to do this. You have to do that in order for me to love you. And then it becomes more and more tight and constricted. And then over time, people begin to hate the one that they were madly in love with and deeply in love with because they're always seeing their partner as a thing, which isn't who they are. You, you never speak to a thing. You speak to consciousness. It's not the thing that he, hears you. The, the, the body is an interpreter. So the body is interpreting the sound and turning it into thoughts. But what's conscious of that is consciousness. So who's listening to me now? Who's looking at me now is consciousness. And then there's an interpretation happening. But that interpretation, so your thoughts, your ideas, your feelings about me are something that's coming and going and not an experiencer. They are experienced. They're in a way as indifferent and as impersonal as I am to you. They're these feelings and thoughts that arise totally impersonally. But yet there is consciousness from both sides staring at each other. So it's always consciousness speaking to consciousness. So even if you're speaking to somebody that's bound and deeply suffering, in another way, you're speaking to absolute expansiveness because it's consciousness that's there clearing as if it's contracted. But actually consciousness is always free and can only ever be free. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? So everyone that you see that tightly contracted and suffering and dark and maybe done terrible things to you, they're actually that infinite possibilities behind that apparent um, suit they've got on of them. And that's their essence. Your mother, your father, your lover, your children, your enemy, your rival, your boss, your co-worker, they're all that infinite nature of beingness. On the human level, so on the machine's level, you have negotiation, you have arguments, but it's like a deep rootedness in who you truly are. Like, so once the argument's done, that's not them, that's not you, that's done, that's normal. That's what seems to happen in the human world is we have to argue to find boundaries and to find what we want. And then there's joy and there's excitement, but still all of that's passing. Your true love is that consciousness that's always here and that beingness, that sense of existence. That's the true love. That's the infinite possibilities. That's what doesn't cage your partner. That's what doesn't cage you. Mm. 
This is it, baby. This is it. I love that. I love non-duality. Um, so next time you look at your partner, you think you know who you're looking to on the human level, but you don't. They're free. They're free.